some of the things I heard about him. I mean, I, I hear he's an artist, a rapper, a singer, a producer, engineer. He's a, he's a movie producer, a writer, a director. And they, they say the man got a comic book coming out. That's right. <laughs> man, we got Keith Richmond in the building, man. Dot what up, y'all? This is Keith Richmond, a.k.a. Dot Rich, owner of Dot Rich Studios. How y'all feeling tonight? Man. Tag some people, bring them live with us. Yeah, come on, tag them with us, man. Y'all see the energy that man got? Yeah, man. <laughs> so, yeah, all the stuff I just named. I'm gonna knock a couple what of those things. What did I, what I, is there anything I left out? No, you, you actually hit everything beautifully, except for I'm not a music producer, I say. No? I'm not, I, don't, I don't make beats, so you know a lot oh, of people, okay. I, don't, I don't make beats, I am a rapper. Uh, yeah, I man. executive produced my last soundtrack. So, oh, okay. So that was that's what it was. Shout out to the executive producer. Well, executive I feel like production. I feel like anyway, if you creating in any form, you that's producing right. music. That's right. So. That's that's facts. That's facts. Because I, I was just talking to somebody that was at the studio with you or something. So, <laughs> yes. So yeah, go ahead and give us a rundown on you, man. Oh man. So yes, I am an artist. Uh, it all started with drawing for me. I've been drawing since the '80s. Yeah. Since I was five. And that's basically what broke me into getting into like comic books. Mm -hmm. um, the drawing got me into writing, which obviously listening to hip hop in the 80s, I was kind of like pushing into it by my big brother. Oh, okay. Uh, no, NWA, too short. Yeah, yeah. LL Cool J was the one. Yeah. That, that I'm bad. That song I'm bad is what for me. Um, my brother used to make me like learn the lyrics. Cause he used to he used to mess up the the, the gospel records. Yeah. When my parents would leave, and he would scratch them up and make me learn rap the lyrics oh, from, wow. from Yo MTV Raps. This is the eighties. Oh, uh, so you so, had an in-house mentor. Yes, yeah. so, but I was but I, my love was art, so yeah. he was always drawing, you know. And I was still just trying to draw, but he was pushing me to rap because he said I could see that in you. You got that energy, and you got a voice that. You know, he wanted to mold and he did that. Yeah. And by the time I hit middle school, he started recording me on his uh, pocket recorder. And he was so, beat on the table. So and tell me a little bit about him, though. You keep saying, my big bro, about your brother. Like, what, did brother. he have a company or something? Or was he nah, just nah, nah, this was just at the house, man. He just had a love for music. Uh, his <laughs> thing was, like, we grew up in a church. Mm -hmm. um, Omaha, Nebraska is where I'm from. Oh, okay. I was born in 1980. Uh, that's where my, my parents met. Yeah. Uh, split it, like, the mid-80s. But... My brother, you know, I mean, we were diehard gospel, like yeah. diehard Christian, Baptist Christian, and, and listening to secular music was the worst sin ever. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. when that, <laughs> so but when they would leave, like my brother was was troublesome. When they would leave, you know, he used to he used to run with. Yeah, he in the streets. He, he got all yeah, the things. He, he got everything totally, he's not totally. supposed to have. And he would bring yeah. it home. So when the parents would leave. 
That's how the big brother always yeah, is, though, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, they yeah. always got their foot to the, you know, they got the, uh, 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 a little bit of an edge on everything. Like, mm -hmm. So, yeah, shout out to my big brother, Devon Richmond. Man, shout out. Rich. For sure, man. So, he was he was in there honing trying to trying to get you to be a rapper or whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what came next? Like, did you like when you when you with the art? Did you go anywhere with the art, or did you? Uh, yeah, just, I did. Uh, in terms of like, do you mean like? Did you pursue it in any form? Like, did you uh, like higher education with it or yeah. anything like that? Yeah. So like in 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 middle school, it was just about drawing. Mm -hmm. Like as long as I was drawing something, I felt good. People used to always ask me to draw them stuff. And, and when I was drawing the art, like teachers, they saw it. You need to take up art. You need to take up art because you're really talented. Um, but I didn't really care for it then. You know, like in the mid-90s, it was all about sports. Yeah. You know, and all the girls at school liked the athletes. The yeah. yeah. I'm not going to name all them athletes. That was the golden era. Right, high, but y'all know who y'all are. <laughs> y'all made it real hard for a brother. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they ain't giving y'all no shout-outs, though. <laughs> so you was in, that was here? That was in Yeah. You, no, so, so, so when did you, yeah. when did you yeah. end up moving? Uh, so my oh, parents split. Here. And in the middle of the night, my mom packed up the station wagon and we headed to Wisconsin. We came to Racine because that's where the, the Richmond family oh, okay. where primarily is located. And then my uncle Jimmy, he actually told my mom, you should move them out to Kenosha. Yeah. It's a little bit better for the kids. So <laughs> that's how we ended up. Oh, okay. Kenosha. Yeah. Man, that's what's up, man. Ended up at Bullet Middle School and that's when I really found out that I was a rapper. Uh, I, was, I used to run with these two cats, one Carl Gates, what up Carl, uh, and LaKentra Thomas. Um, yeah, and uh, my brother, you know. Man, this cat Solomon and uh, Miguel, I can't remember Solomon last yeah, name. Though, man, this is Mexican cat Miguel. Yeah, yeah Miguel, yeah. yeah. He, yeah. I, but yeah, I knew a couple of them cats, man. That's dope, though. That's crazy, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah. So you was running with a the crew there, so which I was just freestyling and rapping in the yeah, hallway. Yeah, we used to, to but the real rappers then, were like Andrew Brantley and Martel Pringle yeah. and a few others. Oh, okay. I used to listen to him rap, but I wouldn't. I didn't think I was a rapper. But they was at school with you, or they was the same age and whatnot? Well, junior, well, in junior high school, where I met them cats. Oh, oh that's dope. Well, and that's where it was. It was all about ciphers. Every day, every morning, these cats would battle rap. And uh, one, one morning, after my brother recorded me on that recorder, he made me take it to school. I played it for my boys, LaKendrick and Carl. Yeah. When they heard it, they said, you need to play this for A.B. now. Mm -hmm. I remember a couple of them. Uh, we were battling in the. They were battling in the lunchroom. This was like early in the morning, you know, when when it was winter time. So they had you stand inside before class start. And I played it for them. They was like, "Oh, that nigga, I eat that nigga up." So it was like, <laughs> "Oh my god!" <laughs> and then the cipher popped off. I jumped in the cipher. I jumped on the table and started freestyling. And yeah. like I had the whole lunchroom going crazy. From that point on, everybody called me rapping cra crazy key. Oh, that's, okay. That's what it was. And then it got win within the school system itself. Uh, the school, the school was doing a lot of things like back then. You know, like the they used to have that weekly uh, uh, school broadcast. Yeah. They would have like the news broadcast for the week. Yeah. And um, the teachers uh, caught wind of me because in English class there was there was a poem we had to learn and recite. You had to pick a group. I picked my boys, Carl and LaKendra Thomas. Mm -hmm. And we got home. We was on three way on the landlines. <laughs> we were learning these, and I said we should do it in a rap format. Mm -hmm. Carl would always beatbox, and Mila Kendrick mm -hmm. would trade the words back and forth. We did it in front of class. So what kind of rap was y'all doing? Like, it, was, it was a poem called, uh, Whose Woods These Are? Oh, I'm Carl's. saying, but at that time period, being oh, that you came 90s. from like the, you, you, were, you were in a, like a church-oriented household. Mm -hmm. Like, what kind of rap were, were you doing? Like, based on your experience? Oh, yeah, no, see, so, <laughs> see, when we, see, when we left Nebraska, we left my dad. Dad, uh, was, 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 oh, so y'all got the single mother, and y'all just mm -hmm. she let us okay, she let us journey into the world. So now <laughs> here yeah. in the second, we're here yeah. now. We're here now. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so we we recite this poem in class, and my teacher loved it. Mm -hmm. So she actually wanted us to re recite it on the bulletin broadcast. So they had us record it, and they played it for the whole school. Oh man, that's dope. Yes. And then from there, they started doing these talent shows. They so your name is had a drug-free rap contest. I entered that. And, you know, most of the rappers, they wasn't doing no drug-free rap contest. <laughs> what was that? Something like that AODA and all that type yeah, of stuff back then? Yeah, you know, uh, wear and show you can yeah. that type of stuff. Yeah, oh, dare, that's crazy, dare, you, you know, the deep dare. Yeah. yeah. And when I read it, I was saying that's crazy because I was doing the same exact thing, but, like, at the same time. Like, it's like... I was sitting there listening to you talk like, man, this this the Kenosha version of me or some that's shit. Right. <laughs> it's, but, but yeah, I'm 40, man. so you know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but, oh, sorry. 
What'd you say? Mm -hmm. So when he came to hip hop, when it actually when he came to hip hop, the type of hip hop music, you know that during that time it was crisscross. There mm -hmm. was there was obviously like the two box and the and the, you know the popular music of that time. And, yeah. And those were influences, but you know. See, I was back trying. then, I wasn't really into like the popular people. I was into like the stuff, that, like the eyeball. I used to listen to like, like Kwame. Oh yeah, that was that was yeah, good. Yeah, that's that was like, good. Like I used to listen to that kind of stuff. Like I wasn't really in. Still today, I don't really do the radio. People. No, not today. Today, I'm I'm still I'm very old school today. Yeah. Like right now, I'm very very old school. I miss the '90s form mm -hmm. of rap music. Yes. Um, I do have an appreciation for the music. It sounds good, mm -hmm. but for me, it's. I don't, sometimes I don't feel like it's rap music. I feel yeah. like it's more of a pop, R&B type well, see, style. I always look at it, cause see, like I always say this, when people talk about rap and people are, like from our generation, criticize this generation mm -hmm. like yeah. music. You gotta look at some of the stuff. Like we had Das Effect. Mm -hmm. Das Effect blew up huge. Mm -hmm. They weren't even saying nothing. No, it was just you how, had the foolish mm -hmm. The foolish You had all these different people that wasn't really saying. So we can't really, Criticize the young No, it's just your it's age. We just <laughs> own it. It's the generation of Oscar Ryan's voice saying shit. No, I used to be it's age. I used to be like I used to be like with Who's my mom right? and my mom and them used to be like, man, why don't you listen? All they hear all they hear is the bad part. They don't hear none of the cadences, none of the delivery, mm -hmm. none of the flow, mm -hmm. none. They just hear the cuss words. Mm -hmm. like, That's why I say it sounds but it sounds beautiful to me. One time we be heading to Mississippi, my grand my dad was like Hey, give me some. Well, my dad was old. My parents was old. My mom was born in 1939. I was like, hey, give me some of that two shot. Yeah. <laughs> then we ride. And he just grooved into it. Because like, he connected to the, like, right. like, the, the groove and, the, and all the funk P short, too short, them used to have in their music. Like, so, like, that generation, the music is, is it's always a connection in there if you're willing to look for it. That's right. right. That's we're right. not willing to let these people, let these kids do, be who they are. That's right. You can't just say, hey, man, that ain't real. That ain't mm -hmm. rap. I listen to it and I'd be like, man. To tell you the truth, one of my favorite rappers right now is Lil Uzi Vert. <laughs> Listen to him. <laughs> Listen to him. I do like him. Let me just say this. Let me just say this. Let me just say this. I do appreciate it. Do, I, do. Do. I like I like the baby. I like yeah, I like the baby, baby. a lot. But I think it's just the way he flipped it. Yeah, yeah but see, y'all listen to the baby. He got a clean delivery. It's delivery. And his that face looks like man. he sounds. He looks exactly how he sounds. And he, well, my thing with the wow. baby is this. Like, it's the mustache. The baby, the baby did. You know what I'm saying? The little kids ran up on the baby with a BB gun at Walmart. Mm -hmm. He killed one of the kids. Mm -hmm. Man, I don't need to hear about you talking no, about you got this gun that. every song and what you finna do every. You not that tough, bro. No. I know a lot of dead tough guys. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. yeah. That's my main thing with dude. I like his sound. I, I, I like, like his sound and delivery. Message. <laughs> <laughs> I like his sound and delivery. Yeah, he's but sound clean. That, like, right, right now he's on. He's like one of the one young ones. That, but he's not really young. The baby, thirty-two years old. Yeah. But he's really spitting though. He really mm -hmm. he's spitting spins. Out, he spins. Though. Like for me, like like hip hop. When it comes to me, like we talking lyricists. Like mm -hmm. a lot of artists don't. Um, well, he's an underground artist. Loaded Lux. <laughs> Loaded Lux. That's my man. You know. Uh, but he's a battle rapper. But he's very, very lyrical. Mm -hmm. That's the type of rap I like. And then it's it's, it's kind of like the subject matter is yeah. also another thing. I love the comedies, you know. I love the J. Coles. I love I love I love Kendrick a little bit. Um, I'm like I, I I think he's dope, but he's not like my dude. You yeah. know what I mean? I pick Cole over Kendrick any day. Yeah, you know, I'm, you know I'm old school. Yeah, but who's your favorite rapper of all time? Of all time, Tupac. Tupac. That's it's because Tupac. of the strength of the message and and a lot of the, 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 the great things about Tupac is what I love. See, but I know Tupac's favorite rapper was Sibo. Like, yeah. Tupac said in his, his own mouth, his favorite rapper was Sibo. So I grew up on Bo and all that. Like, I grew up on the people Pac listened to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, like, my, my favorite rapper gonna be somebody crazy. You be like, who is that? I never heard of this guy. <laughs> so, like. And it's but, crazy because every dope. time you play your CD, my daughter is like, Uncle Keith sounds like Tupac. He's not. Yeah. yeah. I heard, I did hear a little yeah. bit. Of <laughs> so let's get back into that. Like, so your growth with the music and whatnot, you started doing this, you started like getting your buzz around high school and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you, when you finished high school, what was the next steps? Like, what oh, did you? Oh man, I, 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 my dream was to go to school so I could make cartoons. Yeah. That's what, so that's what you went to school yeah. for? So yeah. So I went to school for, uh, actually for, I got my bachelor's degree in uh, fine arts for um, uh, my concentration in illustration and animation. Mm. Um, so you did that here in, in, at, at Parkside? UW Parkside. Oh, okay, yes, that's dope, man. 
Oh, man, that's good. So that was my fault. When I actually when I left high school, I was done with music. Yeah. I literally threw like all my notebooks away. You just gonna do and This is me. I'm not a rapper. Because remember, like we coming from the '90s, hardcore hip hop. Uh, what shit? Uh, DMX them starting to come out. And I was like, I, I'd never fit. In. <laughs> I figured I'd never fit into that mold, that 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 that, that style because I'm not. I was like, my brother, if he was a rapper, I was like, he would he would have jailed in because for yeah. me. I was I was just a nerd, you know. Yeah. So <laughs> I saw myself going wow. to college, and that's where I, that's what that's what I jumped right so into. So with that, what did you plan on doing? Like you wanted to make like cartoons, or yeah, you wanted to start my own or? cartoon comic book, and that's when it all came to what I'm working on right now. I actually started this comic book I'm developing mm -hmm. back then. This is early late '90s, early 2000s. Yeah. Um, and I had a concept for this character. Uh, that I've been, have been working on for quite a few years before I entered college. And then uh, when I started learning technology, because mm -hmm. at Parkside, that's when, when I was first introduced to computers. And when I learned I could scan my drawings into the computer yeah. and start bringing them to life, that's when I was like, oh, it's on. So I was like, fuck the music. Vectors and vectors and yeah. A1s and yeah. PNGs yeah. and we about to do this and that. Yeah. yeah they introduced me to like mic Macromedia Flash and all the programs yeah. for Adobe and, and I would live in the lab. I would live in the lab. And you know, the craziest thing though is when I'd be studying in the dorms or whatever, I'd still be writing poetry. Mm -hmm. And I was saying, oh, I could write poetry. You know, I'm not a rapper, I write poetry. But I'd find myself listening to music. You always write. So, you know, you be, you, you're between two worlds when you have that instilled yeah. in you. You know what I mean? Like, like, Just like all the creative person, you know, mm -hmm. Creative people always have different, you know, our, 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 like thought patterns and stuff are different. So you got different. Like issues and, and and different vices and different stuff than the average person. Like, and that's one thing I will say that I love about you that you always think outside the box. Mm -hmm. And those people to me are some of the most creative people that there is because it's always something different. You bring something different to the table. Like, what are you left-handed? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny too. You say that because like being left-handed as a kid, I had to adapt to all the right-handed things though. Mm -hmm. Um, like with the computer, the mouse was always on the right hand side, and I was like, I can't do this. But then, yeah. what's funny is, I could never operate it right with my left hand, mm -hmm. so I had to do it with my right hand. And then, like an element, like in kindergarten with scissors, a lot of the scissors were made a certain way for us, and so I couldn't do it with my left. I had to. So yeah, it was it's just a weird. Lot of, but, it, you know, a lot of, it's a lot of in the intellectual advancements when you left. Like it's, it's like scientific. It's proven stuff. So that's why I asked you that because I, I, yeah. I know. You know yeah. <laughs> so like you were just that, how did you end up? Where did where did the movie making and stuff come from? Oh, see, that was that was all by accident because uh, <laughs> when I was in school, it was all about the animation. I actually um, once I once we finalized the animation course, we had to do well, we had the option to do an independent study, and so I did mine as a, a cartoon, a seven minute cartoon, and I did it about Allen Iverson. That was the year they lost. They got swept by the Lakers, you know, but whatever. Um, because that was my team. So I did a short animation flick, and that actually landed me an internship with the Milwaukee Brewers doing scoreboard animation. So it was all about that. Um, and that's what I knew. I didn't do film. I didn't care for film. I didn't care for music videos. I cared about cartooning, yeah. you know, just, but all the process of doing it. When I left college, uh, I did get a job um, from the internship, got me a graphic design job. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I still, like, relinked with my boys in music. So what ended up happening was like uh, my my guys who were trying to pull me back to music like on the side it was like a hobby thing you know mm -hmm. we started making music uh, we go to like all the little duck the way studios um, and then uh, we started wanting to make our own album covers and whatnot yeah so I started designing our covers and then uh, we I bought a camera and I was like man it's not the, the the process is not much different than making an animation. All the yeah. difference is I don't have to sit and draw all the time and like draw lip sync and all yeah. that and color backgrounds. I can just shoot the footage Put and it edit. Yeah. So that's actually what got me into the film process. And then from there, shooting more music videos. When I came back to it, um, it was still just about uh, making music videos just to have visual stuff, just for just for the content of pushing my name. My brand. You ever think of making like a Cartoon music video? Oh yeah, I'm, I, yeah, you, yeah. I got some stuff I'm working on right now. <laughs> okay. yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say because I might have to commission you or something. Man, right, man we put you in the game, man. We give yeah. a laptop. Talk about that cartoon. Video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on something. Y'all gonna see it very, very soon. You, could you see the laptop talk uh, intro yeah, with the with the South Park? Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. I love that a lot. So I got you know. Laptop. 
Said that, that the acting stuff came about accident? How, yeah. how so? Yeah, just being in my music videos. Well, actually, so the funny thing is, being in college, you know, I'm in my last year and I'm mm -hmm. just getting ready for my, I'm working on my internship, but I'm also, uh, I wanted to do an art show. So that's all I did my last year in college. And uh, so one of the uh, drama professors walked up to me and he just liked my energy and he was like, man, you should take one of my courses. I was like, what for? I'm not an actor. <laughs> He said, just take one of my courses. So I signed up for it. And he loved me. He was trying to get me into drama. And I'm like, this is my last year, bro. This is it. <laughs> I'm trying to leave. But that actually uh, got me into acting. During that yeah. time, the funniest thing is when I met Felicia. She was a baby. And I, I met her. What? <laughs> yeah, she was, pretty much. So she was like 14. Was it, she was like 14. <laughs> I'm not oh, old like you. you. The, the thing about like Felicia Chapman and, and her family and and the, the extended family that I met through her was that uh, they were all like performers naturally. Dancers, singers, yes. uh, spiritual dancers in the church. Man, and, I saw and, Felicia Buxton move the other day. I was like, what? <laughs> you seen that video? <laughs> I knew it was her. That's just yeah, like when I, I saw her in your movie when I watched that uh, What If There Be Thorns. I'm like, I know that's her daughter already because they got the same face. Exactly. So, yeah. Ain't that crazy? Yeah. <laughs> It's in the family, it's in the family. <laughs> so me, like, I, I, I stay in there for a lot of the stuff because you kind of have, you know, like, when you don't have, when I don't have access to something, I just get what I can and make it happen. Yeah. And that's pretty much how a lot of the music videos happen. You know, okay. it was just like trying to grab random people. Anybody who was either wanting to gain exposure or if I could just persuade them somehow, like, hey, I need you in this video. I just need your face. I just need your image so that I could tell the story. You know, a lot of times it would be like a fluke. It'd be a hit or a miss. Um, but then, like, after I came back um, and reinvented my brand of Dot Rich Studios and uh, started working on my comic book and on my, um, started working on my comic book and my, my album back was uh, when I did the Bambi Chick video. And uh, Felicia was... Uh, so that, that, was, that was the actual, that was your album or did you... That was... The, saw, what, what was that? You had... A series of music with yeah, the like, graduate, I mean, yeah. with the graduate studies. So actually, that's the thing about the graduate studies is is me constantly reinventing myself through yeah. life and graduating. Through my first graduate studies was back in early 2000, yeah. 2004, and that 2005. was a different series of mixtapes. That was a completely whatnot. different series of music, uh, mixtape music, and that's what it started as. It was a way to Doc C. Dot Rich was not my original name. It was mm. PC. It was. You know, Keo Rich or whatever. And no, no, Keo Rich wasn't even created. That? That's, that's, that's you too, yeah, right? That was an entity that came because I was trying to find a way to reinvent myself to grow. So that's like the game. CEO, but it's Keo. <laughs> 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 no, there's, there's an explanation to that. That's coming. what I thought it was. Like, I'm like, there's, there's a lot of explanation to that coming too. But right. Dot Rich was only created to like uh, get popular exposure. Yeah. Because my music wasn't anything popular in any sense. You know, I was, like I was saying, I, I loved the, like things that were more depth, layered, yeah. and more conscious rappers where I was. But I mean, I'm fresh out of college. I'm always studying. And, and so so when, I, when I created Dot Rich, it was to gain exposure. I started creating clothing and anything that would just make my name pop. Yeah, just marketing. Make, yeah, yeah, that's basically yeah, yeah. what Dot Rich was. And, and so when I came back to the new graduate study series, I wanted to reinvent, reinvent Dot Rich as Dot Rich Studios. So now it's like, I'm doing this full on everything, boom, you know, just All to get people's attention. Yeah. And uh, when she when she was on the set of that, um, I don't know if she did or didn't like that she wasn't the most popular on the set. <laughs> but after the video, she's like, "I need you need to put me in something that got a, a, a more prominent role." You know, so, you say that? Yeah, what, she what came and deboed me, man. I didn't debo you. Yeah, didn't have enough screen time. Yeah, or pretty much. <laughs> No, it wasn't that. It, it was like being back in that video, it just brought me back to what I wanted to do because I stepped out the game for a little bit to, you know, get my family together. So why you ain't writing a script then and just do your own, make a movie? Because he already has stuff lined up. So I'm like, okay, well, you got this. I'm in. like, I told him, I'm going to be lead lady. And yeah, she was. that's what happened. So she asked me, do you have something? I was like, man, I do got something. Let me see if she can handle it. So that's what the If There Be Thorns came from. So If There Be Thorns, 
was a part of a song series. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you on in one of the interviews before you you, you brought it up and mentioned mm -hmm. where you thought it was it a spinoff of yeah. or a remake of it. Yeah, it wasn't a remake was. of the movie. Oh, okay. But the title, see a lot of a lot of things I do with music. I watch a lot of movies, I read a lot of books. Yeah. So a lot of my titles are from Older Oops. stuff that's been yeah. yeah that See, I, that's I, why I, I saw that, and I'm like, hold up, is that the same? Um, is it because because like I knew the story, but then I saw yours, and I'm like, no, this ain't. Nah. There's there's actually a song. He called, didn't tell me everything, so when I got <laughs> interviewed, I I got I a little excited. I was dying laughing. She over here like, man, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what what. Who, what? That's a, that's all part of. It. I was like, okay, we just got to wait and see, cause I'll figure it out. You know what I'm saying? So are we putting this out? How, what what happened? <laughs> There, there was actually a song called Flowers in the Attic. I had uh, Petals on the Wind, yeah. uh, The Seeds of Yesterday, which was... Um, so that was, that was one of those. If There Be Thorns. Yeah, okay. those songs were basically based on my own personal experiences. And that's what basically the album was, or is. You know, it's a four-part Yeah, but see, a lot of people won't know where those titles came from. Like, nah, they won't. The average person, nah. like... <laughs> they won't. Some will, like... Yeah, I got it. <laughs> some, some know. Um, but yeah, that's dope, man. So how, what, what put you on that, though? You was always always into that, or was it part of your was, studies as your, your higher education? Um, no, it, like, it, a lot of, you know, like growing up, you're always watching stuff. Yeah. You know, you're watching, whether it's watching cartoons or watching film or watching the stuff my older sister would make me watch, you know, yeah. because she had control of the TV, you know, and she loved the flowers of the attic. Yeah, so when we watched it, we fell in love with it. But like with me, like in school, I used to read a lot. My English teacher, they don't even make you read. So I got it. I fell in love with reading in, in middle school. Mm -hmm. But what that did for me was because I started writing so creatively, it started sparking so many ideas. So the mm -hmm. more I read, the more I would write or the more I would draw. And so then I start tying everything together, drawing and writing. And that's where the comic book storyline just came into play. And then I start basing a lot of the characters around my own experiences. and. And a lot of the key characters are based uh, completely around me. You know, yeah. I'm not going to expose what it is yet. So how you are you going to are you going to mass produce? How you going to distribute it? Is it going to be something uh, online or is it? Yeah, I'm doing both versions. I'm going to do full booklet. So I'm releasing this holiday uh, the, the first six issues of the comic book mm -hmm. for everyone who subscribes and give me the 500 uh, subscribers by then. You'll get a free issue. Of, you'll get a free copy of the first issue. Yeah, I'll tap in. Uh, yeah. So. Subscribe to Keith Richmond on uh, YouTube, and you'll be in the in the winnings. Uh, so yeah, um, so that that series will be coming out this holiday season. Um, What's the title for the, for the, the comic book? So the the comic book is called The Black Presentation Notebook, Volume One. And I won't expose what volume of this of the series oh, sequence yeah. it is, but you gotta find that out when you get the comic book. But I'll be distributing that. Digitally, as well as uh, hard copy. I'll be printing up quite so a few copies. And, uh, with the comic book, is that going to turn into like short films? Like, well, well, the hope for that, and this is this is the funny thing, we're already working on the film. Yeah. I'm part of the film for that. Because yeah, you, the you film that I'm doing right film, now, so. the film I'm doing right now, is tied to the comic book. Yeah. But you got it. <laughs> but in order for you to find out, but in order for you to find out how What If There Be Thorns, the film series, yeah. is tied to the comic book, you gonna have to get <laughs> both of them <laughs> and support the actors and the artists. Get in tune with it, y'all. Y'all haven't seen that? Go check that out. It's right there on YouTube for y'all to go see it if you want so, to see it. And what we're filming more. now is we're filming for the film series. We're actually filming the next three parts of the film. Series. Yeah, it's a preview up there for part two. Y'all go check that out. You know, what I'm saying? y'all just go look at that right. That's right. I knew you were. I was waiting for this moment. Like, this is so crap. <laughs> As many times as I asked about this movie, I just got parts of the script for one. I'm finding more about the interim. Yeah, I can't wait to honestly. Now. I the of the, and I'm the lead lady. Yeah, I'm going to start releasing more of the character. Concepts of the characters are coming soon. I actually forgot on the way because it was starting to rain. And I was like just trying to hurry and get out the house yeah. and get down here. And then, But I forgot I was going to bring you actually a couple layouts and show you some stuff. Um, let you look at it. Where, where the spinoffs came from. Original yeah. drawings I had from back in. Man, my college days. You get back where you going? Just yeah, it's, 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 it's gonna, gonna pop up. up. It's gonna pop up. It's gonna pop up. When you get everything ready, man, just give me a holler, man, and I pull up on you. And yes. You can get the people in depth, like when 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 you get like say you do a release or something mm -hmm. for the comic book. We're doing one, a, a full book. Posted, I'm trying. So this is this is my plug to uh, Blue House Books in Kenosha, Wisconsin. That's what you're doing it through. I'm working with her. I'm talking to her now, and and she she will. She said she will work with me in distributing it. 
um, a certain amount of copies. Yeah. Uh, obviously, she gets her percentage. But y'all go check out Blue House Books if you love doing books. She she does a lot of uh, what are the things that women do? The book reading, what are the book clubs? Yeah, she does book really? clubs. Yeah, book reading. <laughs> Sorry. Right, we'll this is something I'll pass it down and preview. Um, y'all go through it together. But for she me, got like a Facebook page too. Y'all that's right. That out. Yeah. For me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a, a a book signing and a release. So you can get so those of you, if you win your free copy, you can come on down to the book signing and pick your first copy up. And yeah, probably purchase the next five. Hey, I'm gonna <laughs> do that, man. Yeah, have the black day. presentation notebook coming soon. Very, very soon. This holiday season. Do you have a website for it or is it I do have a Dot Rich Studios website. I'm in the process of revamping that. So okay. once everything is ready to start being completely put, you'll see it very, very soon. You'll you will be able to get the comic book through there. Um uh, there's also going to be a digital version, which is going to be exciting for people to see. So once you see the digital version, you'll know basically where I'm going next with the mm -hmm. comic book itself. And that's more like animation. I'm trying to... But what I want to do with the animation is it's it's tough animating a full on series by yourself. Oh, so yeah, obviously I'm, I'm, work. I'm trying to build the budget to get a, a strong animation team to um, help me bring... I got a guy, I know, to one, of my, one of my guys in Milwaukee is doing a, a series, man. I'm, I can actually give you his info, so y'all can probably work something out. Man. So, like, Marnell Billups, if you listening, yeah, it's one, of the, <laughs> one of the guys I went to, to, yeah. to school with. He's also another fellow black uh, African American. This dude I'm talking about, name is Zach. Zach, Zach. Just. Oh, yeah. yeah. Why, dude, Look doing. me up with him, too. Yeah. We all can put something together, man. Yeah. Now, you want to make sure before being on YouTube? Oh, actually. Oh, I, told him I said that already. The one that's currently? Yeah. Oh yeah, he said, yeah, he said, he said it's it's next. Yeah, what I wanted to talk about really though is the flyer I saw the other day with the versus battle or whatever. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So that's so if you got a versus battle, it's gonna be on YouTube Live. I mean Facebook you, Live. I mean, yeah, so Facebook. He, I think so so it's it's me and Tail P. Okay. Martel Pringle, he's also So what y'all gonna be face to face in the same place? Yeah, we actually setting it up. Yeah, like y'all gonna this. track for track, huh? Yeah, track. Yep, Thirty tracks a piece. Man. DJ G Love and will be uh hosting it. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, we working you know, on like. You put us in tune with G Love, man. I keep hearing all this yeah, stuff about the videos. Yeah, we're supposed to shoot another YouTube video. Well, so. when you shoot the video with him, tell him we need him on Lab Talk so we can talk about shooting videos. Gotcha. With people, you know, with, with, you know, <laughs> put the videos together. I got you. I got you. Yeah, the versus battle will be August 29th, actually. Okay. Um, and we're going song for 30 songs. We were supposed to do 20. When Tell P asked me, you know, when I... What, 30 songs, though, man. What the hell is like? That's, that's like an hour and a half or something. Yeah, it's going to be a nice little show. I'll tell you that. Y'all playing the whole song or y'all playing hours. like a little snippet? No, we, uh, not so, just no, verses, we, so. we're doing, it's kind of like verses, but we do, we got some surprises in there. Oh, that's what's up, so, man. I'm going to have to make sure I check in yeah, with yeah, that, got man. got some surprises. That's why we chose to do it live and had a DJ so we could do it. Oh, that's dope, man. More in a creative way. Like, I'll tell you this, like, so like I said, I met Tell P back in middle school when Tell mm -hmm. P was... Tell P was a person that after he knew when he knew you could rap, that's what you're gonna do every day when he see you. Every day. He run up on you and say top of the dome, top of the dome, Keith. So you had to either have a fresh 16 or you had to freestyle. Yeah, he wasn't and like him and him and him and him and Angel Brantley, A B, aka A B, two yeah. legends in Kenosha, they would battle like nonstop. Yeah. yeah. Even at Bradford High School, they would battle nonstop in the, in the commons area, just battling all, at lunchtime. Rapping and rapping and rapping. And so that was a thing that kept it alive. Him and who? What was that guy? Angel Brantley. What are you doing? He still spent, he still rapping. We're just trying to bring him out. We're trying to bring him back out. But y'all see him soon. <laughs> that's, all, that's dope, man. So, shit, what else you got cooking up that you want to hear the people be before we check out? So, yeah, so along with the. So, basically, we got the film series we're working on right now. Uh, we're, we're dropping that the first quarter of the new year. What okay. if there be Thorns Part? Two through four. Man, I might um, have to give me a cameo or something. Man. We're working right now. Like I'm actually linked with a nice distribution to get it on Hulu, Netflix, Amazon, and so forth. So is so it gonna be the same yeah. like type of platform, or is it gonna be modern day, or what? Surprise like a mug, man! It's so crazy. Like so, this story it. is so layered, bro. I'm so excited for y'all to see because yeah, because it does take you through time zones. Yeah. So that's what I'll tell you like that. It takes you through time yeah. periods. That's dope, man. And, uh, uh, so we got that coming. The comic book will be dropping this holiday season. But in addition to that, we're working on part two of the soundtrack. Josiah the Prince will be producing the entire soundtrack. Yeah, shout out Josiah, um, you hard with and Shalant, like Shalant, hit me up. He's like, he said he wanted to uh, executive you know, produce the together, entire. Huh? Yeah, so he took that off my back. Thank you, yeah, Shalant. Man, that's so what much. We just, we just put out I needed that weight off my back. <laughs> we, did first, we did that first lab talk mixtape, man. Make yes. sure you send us something yes. on volume yes. two. Yes. 
forgot you. And, and Pete out executive produced that. He put that thing together so hard, man. And that's no, listen that's to classic. it. The shit is bam, 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 oh, bam, 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 bam. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, is we got new shit out too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's on Spotify. Welcome to Dotland. Check it out. Yeah, Shameless right. plug. Yeah. Yeah. Lab Talk Mixtape. Spin a Rose. Hey, So that, that's what we got coming out next. Uh, so my mission, so basically what I do is I say I'm in phases. Mm-hmm. Phase one is when I first started Dot Rich in the graduate studies. The graduate studies is a point. Every time I experience certain experiences in life, I go through this experience and once I'm done, I start writing. I go to my my therapy notebook. Mm-hmm. I start creating music and I graduated. So I feel like I, I graduated myself through life, that portion of life. And here comes a new graduate study. So now we're on volume two of the graduate studies was the last product I released. But what yeah. we're entering is phase two of Diver Studios, which is actually volume three of the graduate studies, working on that new album right now, which will be also produced partially by Josiah Prince. So who's doing uh, all that work? Meyer. Work. Yeah, yeah I, do some, I do a lot of recording, but working with with Josiah, he wants to yeah, record a lot because he wants to mix. Like he loves being in charge of his mix. Josiah on fire right now. And he is. Yeah, he is. He's he is. That's what's happening. He got yeah, three Josiah, songs. He got three he songs he produced on Lab Talk. Y'all on that Lab Talk mixtape? Yeah, 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 he is. And you gotta check out his Lab Talk. Uh, he, he did us a promo too, where he yes. yeah, the like, oh, cherry top. Cheers, man. Hi. He did. He did one. Hey, <laughs> but he did it so cool though. So, was so, he in the chair though? Yeah, no, yeah, he was. But I, <laughs> I, I, I was trying not to get him to do it like similar, but he said that's my staple. Shout out to the hilarious. Yeah. You gotta keep doing yeah. that. And I didn't put it out yet because that one's out, and I'm letting that one get it. Yeah. Because otherwise, it kind of looked the same. Yeah, well, it's already a shit. He just does about five thousand views on it. Mm-hmm. But shit, man, we definitely appreciate you coming in here, man. Lisa, what you got for him, man? I mean, the main thing I want to know is your feedback from your family after hearing the graduate studies. But, oh, from my, my major family? Mm-hmm. Oh, they kind of knew. Like, also, my big brother, he loved it. Um, D. Rich. He was excited. Yeah. He actually, when we did the album release party for it, he DJed that event for um, and so we we did. Oh, so he's still yeah. active in the music. Yeah, he DJs. He DJs. Yeah. He DJs weddings. He does house parties yeah. and stuff like that. That's it's something he just do for like for fun. But he, yeah. you know, his passion for music is crazy. And whenever he find a beat or something, or he hears something new, he's like, Keith, jump on that for me. Jump on that. <laughs> and I and I don't care. Like I'm I'm past like I'm I'm actually past the mixtape stage. Yeah, like, man. So like the 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 first two. So the first graduate study was all mixtape. The second one was a mixture of original production mm-hmm. and industry beats, um, but this new project is completely original. All original production for sale from, produ- from producers. That'll be. Um, this is actually be the, the first artist, for sale. Ain't nothing free no more. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. The first. Don't get it, man. Put that shit on Spotify. Fuck free. The uh, <laughs> the, the, the the part one soundtrack is right now on on all streaming platforms right now. It's called What If There Be Thorns. You can get that. Y'all go check uh, that out, man. I got some singles I'm actually about to release in uh, like a week um, on, on Australian platforms, too. That's what's uh, up, man. Dope, some different. Uh, Y'all keep what it's, cop, keep, what it's gonna be under. Keep, keep Keith that, Richmond. Oh, okay. Keith Richmond, a.k.a. Keo, uh, Dot Rich. Keith Dot Richmond, Rich. a.k.a. Dot Rich. Yeah. Okay, so when you gonna release some other two music videos? <laughs> <laughs> I told you I got you, you, in the, you in the video You started in the video she, Of course She gotta be in Working like man. crazy You know <laughs> she, no she, days off, man. she was pushing man. She was always on me like What else can I be here What else can I do yeah, so, yeah. It, I mean it's not just that I'm I was making sure Stuff got done Yeah she was She was on me She was putting people was To sleep me. and all kinds of shit <laughs> <laughs> Message No comments <laughs> no comment. Music video <laughs> Damn. Yeah, well, my family, my the family loved it. Um, actually, I wrote like a lot of music is family oriented. Wow. So. <laughs> Shut up before I say your government name. Ooh, that, that, shit, everybody know that shit. You know, like, my mama yeah, named that. Though, man. We appreciate you coming through here, man. And whenever you got something cooking, just let us know. Keep us in the loop with you. Definitely. Thank I'm y'all for having me. Which one? Lab man? talk, man. Yo, right? Oh, no. All right, y'all done? So we ain't got no more talk. Oh, you got two videos coming? Then we already shot. Okay, we got shot. Give it a, give it a rundown, though. So I told you I'm working on <laughs> doing something with those specials. That's I mean, how you still got to actually work. I'm impatient, work. though. There's a lot of... I'm not going to say what I'm doing with them, why you haven't seen them. But we 
you see it. Uh, then you'll know. What it is. You'll know. You'll know. You gotta know. Just keep working. You don't even need to worry about it once you're done. You go on to the next project. We gotta work, 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 work. Thank you, Ego. No. Thank you. That shit come out on Obviously, I'm still working. I just got casted for another movie. But okay. my thing is, she won't these other two videos show different parts of me and different roles yeah, that I do. Huh? Parts, huh? Yeah, they do. They're very creative. You're man. supposed to be on my side. What oh, part is that? Right here, man. You need to get them out there for me to see her. <laughs> we gonna go ahead and wrap it up, man. It's live talk, <laughs> man. Live talk. Listening. Thank y'all for having me, man. Appreciate you, yes, sir. Deuces. Y'all, y'all, y'all finished or y'all done? I ain't got no more talking.